the long-awaited mail-in tournament, first one ever on races and fun is finally here. Hello everybody, I am Brendan and I am thrilled to be bringing this first timer for races and fun. All eight cars you see on the screen were uh, handpicked by people who watch this channel, mailed in over a long period of time. Well, relatively long period of time compared to the length of these videos, I guess. <laughs> and they are here and they are ready to race and they've been, I guess, waiting and excited. And now they're on the track. And how exciting it is. Lily the Dog, Tribute Racing, Pete, and YM will be the first four to ever touch track in this first mail-in tournament. And you can see the track is endurance and speed-based. And Tribute Racing out there on the near side. Looks like he almost left the track for a moment, but gains his control outside line. Oh, a slip from, I believe, YM, who's going to fall back to, I think, third place. Oh, and maybe even fourth place there as Pete tries to get around, but no luck. We already start with quite an exciting race. You could see YM there starting to slip, lose all that speed, and Pete just could not find that uh, outside line to get around. He needed to find that. I will let you know the Mario Kart mail-in tournament still has some spots left. That's the one that will follow this one, so I recommend submitting if you've not already. More chances to... Uh, well, be on this channel and maybe even win on this channel. Remember, the winner of this overall tournament will receive a wonderful 127 free Hot Wheels cars. And remember, 64 of them will race over on the Diecast Racing TV channel, so be sure to be checking that channel out along with this one for the parallel and very important part of this tournament. Here comes Lily the Dog, near side, the twist from Tribute Racing, chance for Lily, but no gap to slide through. Looked like both of them ended up in the middle of the track, and there was just no opportunity. I mean, take a look at this replay. You, you, oh yeah, some movement to the middle and to the side, and just great defensive driving by that yellow Tribute Racing, who uh, could not leave an opening for Lily the Dog. Tribute racing. And uh, this guy's got to be happy so far. Two fives out of the gate. And it's looking pretty good. Though this time looks like Little Dog out to an early lead, then loses it through the outside hairpin. And may have to deal with another one here. Yeah, tribute racing holding that ground by many lengths once again. Here we go to the next couple hairpins. Little the Dog. And she's falling behind quite a bit. Wyam and Pete aren't even in this scenario at this point. Tribute racing down towards the finish. Lily the dog spins. And she might pick up three, though. No, she won't pick up three. Here comes Wyam. And now that second spot, that advancing spot, is maybe hot to change if uh, Wyam can pull another good race. We already know Tribute racing is, is advancing. We might have our first four or five, so our individual partial sweep, we call it, when it's only in the, the group and not yet the final. Three fives in the near side. Lily the Dog, five uh, far side there with eight. You want to look at YM, who has six. So still a chance to overtake. Pete also technically has a chance to overtake, but you, <laughs> you have to get a good, interesting set of finishing there. Pete would have to get all the way up to first place, which is once again held by Tribute Racing, near side. Just skilled through the track right now. Those wheels must be lubed up like crazy because there is no loss of speed. Lily the dog struggles there into the uh, final stretch but straightens out and manages to cross before YM and that will seal this one. YM finally getting across here for one point. And Lily the dog, man it's hard to say that, will be moving on. Along with of course Tribute Racing who has a partial sweep. Remember those terms. Individual sweep represents eight wins and the eight possible heats you will, uh, uh, you could race in a video should you, well, keep winning. And then um, partial sweep being, uh, well, either a sweep in the group stage where you get all four wins or a sweep in the finals where you get all four wins. Normally you look towards a partial sweep in the finals is a little bit more impressive, but either way, they're about even when you count them out. Victor Quilas, Mike August. Lightman and Zach Burns, those are your racers coming out today. On the near side is Mike along with Victor there in that white striped dark blue car. But Mike looks like he has 
the speed and the lead right now. Far side, I think that's Zach Burns holding on, maybe for three points here, down to the fat track section, wiggles through, and Mike will start good and fast. And you can see all the logos there of some of the various uh, submitters uh, lining that end a bit. Be sure to take a look at those. A little bit of free advertising for the wonderful people who submitted. You might even get some of the fans at the stadium to uh, check you guys out. Alguist, not August, Al Alguist. I, I'm not, so listen, I couldn't pronounce Camaro for about four, Camaro, Camaro? For about uh, two years on this channel, right? So I'm not going to try with, with Mike Alguist. I, I'm, I'm doing my best, Mike, okay? Near side here, Victor Kila, Zach Burns, Zach Burns, ooh, out of that second turn, slowed down bunch, and looks like Mike has a commanding lead. Oh, wow, he's gonna be hard to overtake here. Look how fast he is, he literally looks like a blur on my screen in front of me, down to the fat track section, has a lead and some speed. Lightman at second place for a second, but I think he got hung up, and no, it's a train of cars, and Lightman will pick up three here. For anyone who is not Mike or Tribute Racer, don't lose hope yet. We've seen cars improve over the course of uh, races uh, here. You know, here in a group stage. I mean, you just see it happen. We've seen cars come out mediocre, barely scrape by in the group stage, and then in the finals, come out of nowhere and all of a sudden uh, run out with some speed. So, again, anything can happen. Mike Alguist. A big lead once again. Man, he just gets out of the gate. And he gets inside hairpin lines. I mean, it's just over. Mike, by uncountable amounts of lengths, final turn, everything is smooth. And he's just going to run right to the finish line. There is no question about it. No cars even on the screen. Can we see Lightman in there? Nah, we got uh, Victor and Zach and then Lightman. Will he cross? Yes. What is going wrong for these other vehicles? It's, it's getting out of the gate. It's getting out of the gate and getting fast into the hairpins, you know? It's all about understanding that kind of momentum. Let's run it again. Mike looking for a partial sweep here. Still to possibly advance Zach Burns and Victor, most likely here. I guess Lightman again, still with a very small chance, but I think Zach Burns knocked him out already. Mike, looking for the partial sweep. Near side here. Big lead once again. Anyone in the vicinity? I don't see anyone. I see not anyone. Maybe on the far side there's something from Zach. If he can outdo Victor here, who's going to foot race him really fast to the finish line, it could be a tie if Victor stays ahead. No, Zach on the near side! On the near side! Finds the hole and accelerates through. And there will be no need for a tie break. Lightman won't even finish. He'll head home. And Zach Burns will keep himself barely alive here. Which is exciting. I'm not, I get excited when I see comebacks like that. Ah, oh, look at Victor zigzagging through the fat track. And Zach almost ran into back of Victor. But dodged near side at the right time. Guessed right and had open space. Good work by the Zach Burns vehicle. Here we are into the finals. Lily the dog. Tribute racing Mike and Zach Burns. If you we... Place bets based on the first couple groups. I mean, Mike and Tribute Racing seem to be the ones that will be problematic, but I don't want to count out Lily or Zach quite yet. Zach looking a little faster for a second there, held with Mike for a second. Near side, looks like Mike is quite slow right now. Tribute Racing maybe into the mix with Lily, who, well, they're close as well. This could be not necessarily a clear cut race quite yet. Tribute holding out by a few lengths down the back straight and has it by many. Uh, Lily coming in with three. Here comes Mike, and Zach slowed down a little bit. But you can see already a difference. I'm telling you, there's already a difference. Mike was way out in front normally. Zach held with him for about two straight. So, again, we'll see what goes on here. Lily, again, much closer with Tribute Racing this time. And Tribute Racing is the only one capable of an individual full sweep at this point. 
with again another five. Near side with Zach and Lily. Far side, Tribute Racing and Mike going head to head there on that far track. Tribute again coming out strong and fast. Lily trying to hold on as well. Zach not looking that slow though. Looks like there's possibility. He's got to be better through those turns though. Look at all the speed loss through the turns. Mike has a huge lead on Zach, but oh, he's coming up short on Lily and Tribute Racing. Here we go to the final turn and Tribute Racing holding on. Big lead once again. Lily pushes past Mike and that's going to be three again for Lily, but she's running out of time as Tribute has now six fives. I mean, how exciting it will be to get a full individual sweep in the first video. And it's looking like that's very possible right now. I really hope Lily and Mike can speed it up here. Eyes on Tribute Racing, who has the advantage by quite a bit right now. Mike and Lily. Near side and third lane. Trying to keep up and gun it as fast as they can to overtake Tribute Racing. It is a foot race. Mike near side looks fast right now. They turn, maybe even. Where's the acceleration? Not there. Lily still holding close with Tribute Racing. He's got to be faster on those outside lines. The distance is clear in separation. Tribute again. Roll, oh, Lily ran off the rail. Mike in the way, and they're all connecting. And oh, by a couple lengths, Tribute still wins and we'll have three fives. Seven fives in total. One away from an individual full sweep. And that's gonna knock even Lily out of contention for winning this. So Tribute Racing, early congratulations. However, individual full sweep, will it happen? Lily and Mike would love nothing more than to cut that out of the equation. Tribute Racing on the near side. Mike, Lily, looking to make sure that individual sweep does not occur. Lily with everything she's got. Mike as well, but he always struggles on this second turn and that he does once again. Lily, not too far behind though. Tribute starts to build that lead inside lines for both of them. It's gonna be a foot race here at the end. Lily far side, not too far behind. A few lengths accelerating at the end and it's not enough. Tribute racing first episode of the mail and tournament ever on races and fun and we're doing it with an individual sweep eight fives for tribute racing man whoever submitted that that car must be going absolutely bananas right now like literal bananas i i would i could not imagine just submitting a car and then all of a sudden an individual sweep very rare here number two to submit thanks for watching subscribe there will be a sneak peek of the eight cars from the Diecast Racing TV uh, uh, parallel tournament, the first eight. Uh, picture coming up here. So it looks mail in tournament has started off with an absolute bang. One of the submittals, number two, I believe, Tribute Racing. Individual sweep in the first video, securing a very easy spot in the finals. Next set of eight lining up here as we get going. And you see them all listed, and we'll get to know them more as we get racing here. And I'll remind you to join the Discord, especially if you own one of these cars, or if you're preparing for that next mail-in tournament of the Mario Kart series, which does have a few spots left open still. Discord server is a ch chance to talk to fans and me and ask questions and things like that as well as um, we might do some sort of fantasy tournaments even with some prizes based on tournaments on the channel in the future so stay tuned for that and join the server link in the description if you have not already who do we have here in the front looks like RLO and that's going to be five points followed behind by Mr. Dark and a little slower Lone Star Indiana Racing will crawl to the finish maybe needed some more lubricant before being mailed over. Looks like RLO is commanding in the uh, single lane racing and that's what gave him the lead down the back straight here, but we'll have to see how that holds up as we go into the next few rounds. Heat two, switching up the lanes a little bit and we'll see him roll out again. Near side here, we got Indiana Racing, who really didn't do well in the first race and already starting off slow in this one, but the other three cars, they're nice and close and tight. 
going through that first turn. Still pretty close. I see RLO on the backside there, starting to grab a lead, loses it for a second again, gains it back, but it looks like Lone Star has it by a length still. Outside line for both of them. Oh, Lone Star almost leaves the track and goes vertical, but he's back straight. He's got only a few lengths down. He's in front of Mr. Dark Acceleration, but right behind RLO. Loses all momentum, and RLO takes another one. I do not want to count Lone Star out, especially if he advances in some way here because of the speed down that last back straight. That was beautiful. And just needed to find the inside line there. And he did kind of dodge over there towards the end, but too little too late. He needed to find it before that first nudge, which took a lot of his momentum. Maybe even by three, um, division-wise, cut down on his speed. Two fives for RLO. Lone Star, who started with a two, grabbed a three in the last one. Mr. Dark, around the same, just swapped. They're all coming out fast. It looks like Indiana Racing is the only lagger here. And look to the far side. See RLO start to lose a little bit out again to Lone Star, who does have outside lines to work with here, but it looks like RLO is not as fast as he was in that first race. Lone Star keeping pace, not far behind. Maybe two lengths, maybe coming out with only three, almost leaves the track. He loses rail time. Uh, grinds on the rail there, and he's going to lose out. Loses time on the rail. Mr. Dark will come across with only two, and it's going to be a battle between those two for advancement. RLO with three fives and looking at a possible partial sweep here I think if uh, Lone Star has a lane that's inside lines this time he's a good shot I don't want to count Mr. Dark out yet but we know RLO is a definite to advance and Indiana Racing is a definite well <laughs> to not advance unfortunately number 28 very sorry but uh, oh, there'll be many other mail-in tournaments in the future I think he's a definite to not advance here I mean, yeah, so our second place is 3-3-2. Three, three, That's eight points. So, yeah, so definite on advance unless there's a DNF in a crazy situation. Looks like the three that are usually out in front, out in front. RLO on the near side against Mr. Dark. Only a few lengths between them. Lone Star has inside lines here, but so does RLO, which might create some problems. Lone Star starting to drop back a little bit, a few lengths. Needs to work that outside line and grab some speed in this final turn. He comes out pretty clean. They're neck and neck. Lone Star, can he find the gap to slot through? No zigging and zagging. RLO, partial sweep. Lone Star had no space to find. You saw the zigging and the zagging there from RLO on the, on the final stretch when he was in front only by a length, and he just went back and forth hoping to create... Oh, my God. I think Mr. Dark there just... Uh, he just overturned right there. I don't even know how he gets stuck like that. We didn't notice that in the, the frenzy of the top two... But I guess that would mean, well, it does mean a DNF, which I didn't expect. But look at this final replay here. RLO, back to the near side, back to the far side, back to the near side. And he cuts him off at every turn. Absolutely amazing defensive driving, even though Eve is in the offensive position. Very good and notable. Indiana Racing, unfortunately, not up, quite up to par here for the races and fun um, standards for speed and uh, accuracy on the course. Let's go for heat one in the next four. Take a look at our names and numbers. Robert Stone, Dreddy, End Count, and Numskull. Numskull. There on the far side, looking fast on the inside line. Some acceleration. Not quite. It looks like End Count is your fast car right now. Numskull holding pace, though. Still in it. Dreddy needs to pick up the speed. But what about Robert Stone, who's still in there? Oh, Dreddy accelerates down this third straight. Here to the fourth one. Dreddy maybe looking at even a second spot. Nudges Numskull out of the way, but can't get around to the inside line. And Numskull locks wheels at the end and is down by a nose as they cross. Even we had an inside block there, a nose block from end count, heading into the final um, wide track section and it all tangled up as they crossed and it still stayed in short order. Knowing for that acceleration from Dreddy, things might be pretty chaotic coming down the next few races. Let's look at the near side here. We got Numskull playing with Robert Stone. Dreddy, I mean, he always gets off to a slow start. It's, a, it's holding true again. But I'd like to see how he again accelerates later on. He's in last place right now, and he's stuck on the rail. Wheels came out. He's out of this one. Oh, he's back. I think he's back on it. 
He's back straight. Maybe a chance to at least keep out of fourth place. End count. Wiggling and waggling, but he's way out in front. Here comes Numbskull near side. Nudges across, and somehow Robert Stone gets in there as well to pick up three and keep things interesting here for the second place spot. End count on his way to a maybe a partial sweep as well, which would be an interesting trend in this one. It's still up in the air for spot two. I think uh, end count is all but secured, at least advancement. Um, I don't think there's a, any chance he drops to third place overall, so good for him. But the chances is, is he going to keep the partial sweep, number one? And number two, who's going to get second place? I mean, honestly, you've seen acceleration down the fa uh, last couple of straights from both of these, uh, all of these vehicles. I'm not going to say both. All three of them have showed that. And it could be crazy here coming into the final turn. Dreddy looking accelerative again. Coming down the near side. Fast! Look at how fast he is! End count needs to get... Oh! He almost beat end count! Wheel length behind! He accelerated by times two or more, and he went to the outside line, found space, and he did not win, but was very, very close. If he could only speed it up in the first couple straights, I really want Dreddy to advance here. That would be such a chaotic finals. Though I think Numskull um, is, is not really in agreement with me. Numskull, uh, I'll say a more consistent racer. More solid out there on the track, more reliable. Dreddy really starts, well, wild, ends wild, just is all over the place. And it's really going to be up to what it looks like coming here to the back couple of straights. End count again, finding an early lead. Robert Stone in it. Uh, I don't know where Numskull is. He's way behind. Dreddy starting to accelerate here. This is where it starts to build toward the final area. Dreddy accelerating. Robert Stone! And he's left behind. And Dreddy will advance barely, but will... In the numbers, he's up by, I think, one or two points, and we have another partial sweep from end count. Oh, this has been an exciting one. I mean, I could see Dreddy just getting a few lucky pushes out of the gate, and only by one point, and coming back and winning this one here in the finals, or getting close. Here is your finals. End count, Lone Star, RLO, and Dreddy. RLO and, and end count, they're your big speeders. They're the ones who really take over on the single lane racing. Ready? And uh, Lone Star, they're the ones who have that end acceleration where things just start to get insane down the back straight. How is that going to play into this finals? I don't know. End count again, way out in front, unbelievably. Is Dreddy anywhere to be found acceleratively? No. I don't even see RLO. And it looks like, oh, wow. That was close there. I think, ooh, got to get a read on that. Dreddy and RLO look quite similar. I think that was RLO. Oh, wow. See the pass on Dreddy there um, to second place. I mean, third place. So two points for Dreddy, three for RLO. Uh, 51 is RLO. Dreddy is, has the red stripe in the fullness of the bottom, while uh, RLO really only that brighter color on the front moves. So keep an eye on that. End count. End count, the dominant speeder here, especially out of the gate. Again, getting to a good lead right into the first couple of straights as they start to turn again. Very good on the hairpins. Big advantage. Very tribute racing vibes here as he works on another individual sweep. Looking for a uh, sixth win in a row. Maybe something from Dreddy. Oh, he spins out! And Dreddy passes and grabs the win! And it's all over the place as he can only finish in last! One point for end count. All cars pass him as he knocks. Goes for a mistaken 180. All cars find lines around. And this is a different game. Five all the way down to one. Dreddy now with a full seven. And this could go anyway. Let's roll him out again. Dreddy on the near side. Down a couple lengths already, working against end count. Ooh, almost had a nose on him for a second, but it's at least closer. I think after that one race, end count is not feeling great. The distance between them is lower as Dreddy looks to accelerate here, coming down the back straight. Here we go, end count in the lead as usual. Dreddy accelerating, but he's only behind many lengths, and he will grab second. And, ooh, Lone Star is left away again, another one-pointer. No, a zero. I don't think he's... Well, what? Oh. Oh, we... Oh, I don't know if we're going to count that. <laughs> I, I, I would hope not. I don't think so. 
we've, we've kind of been a little uh, unclear on those rules, I will say. I, I, I don't think we do. I, but it might be just front wheels across the finish line, so um, we're going to see. I'm, I'm, this, this might be a DNF. I wish we would solidify on that. Uh, yeah, we do give him one. But here we go to the uh, the last race, Heat 4, and it is possible. End count with two fives and a one. That's 11 points. Dreddy here with 10 points. If Dreddy just beats end count, it's either a tie or a win. Dreddy has to stay fast, though. Has to accelerate here in the early straights to get some room. Even a chance for RLO if a weird finish happens, but Dreddy's got to get out there. He's right now in last place. Absolutely no acceleration. There is that big hairpins for him to work with. Uh, end count staying in there, but what about RLO? Oh, had the lead for a second. He's back in the lead. Even Lone Star gets around him. It's a tangle of metal. Dreddy trying to push past this big pack of cars, but it looks like end count has it. Uh... RLO is going to pick up uh, five there, but the two-point gain is not enough. From two, from seven to 11 is four, and unfortunately, end count finishes with three, and that's going to leave Dreddy with no way out. It was too much happening in the pack on that back stretch for any possibility for Dreddy, who really had acceleration once again. End count will advance, and deservingly so. What a race. What's going to happen today? Hey, everybody, I'm Brendan. Day three and a new set of eight submitted vehicles here in this mail-in tournament. Remember to catch the parallel tournament of the other 64 cars on Diecast Racing TV. 128 were submitted, 64 to each channel. Who, And then, of course, the best four from each will battle in the end in the channel v. channel finals and all that. Uh, well, actually, the best eight from each. We're going to do it a little differently, but that being said, you need to see both channels for all the content. Here we go. First set of four. James White, Cherry Lucas, Marcus Turner, and Bryce as we get things going in this one. The number 33 here on the near side. A bright contrast to the other three more bluish vehicles we have here today. I think Bryce, they're a light blue and maybe even a lavender. Bryce slowing down there, losing some ground. Here comes the Marcus Turner and accelerates down the back straight. And Bryce may lose another spot, but no, he gets nudged from behind. Marcus Turner sideways as he crosses. I don't know what for, but uh, he starts to spin out, I think, but manages to be close enough to the finish line that it's no worries. Do not forget to join the Discord if you haven't already. The Discord server is a place to talk about this channel and ask questions and all that kind of stuff. Interact with the fans. And again, to the future, we might be planning some sort of fantasy event where you can uh, in, in some way bet on the vehicles you think will win and who won't and maybe put something like that together. But it's all based on y'all's interest and how many of you guys join and show that interest in the Discord. Moving it along. Far side, Marcus Turner looking for another win here. Bryce in there as well, but far behind. Marcus Turner straight to the end, and he's got another one. Bryce coasts for an easy three-pointer again, and we have two slow vehicles, Cherry Lucas, and again the James White just stopping way short here of the, the finish line. And he's just stuck there. I think that's going to be zero points. I hope we're giving him zero points there. Let's see what they render unto him after the replay here. There, yeah, zero points. Well, you got to get something across that finish line to count. Heat three, here we go. Looks like the James White is, uh, well, in trouble here. Same with the Cherry Lucas as far as trying to advance. James White again, coming out nice and slow. And he's already down a length or even two. Marcus Turner near side looking for another five. Always the fast cars trying to grind out an individual sweep or at least a partial one. We had one in the first video. We almost had one again in the second video, but it fell short. Marcus Turner looking to make that another reality. Here on the far side, Cherry Lucas. And he's only a couple lengths down, but he cannot make up the ground. What happened with the freaking James White? <laughs> How is he there? What was that? What was that? How is he sitting there? And he still didn't win. 
he literally jumped track to like a length before the end and picked up zero points. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I'm. I freaked out a little bit there. I don't know what the. I don't know what to think about that. I mean, I mean, if anything caught me by surprise, I mean, how did that even happen? I mean, that's like the. All kinds of irony there. I mean, he should have. I mean, what? Marcus Turner. Marcus Turner on the near side. <laughs> no, it's not even the Marcus Turner. There goes the individual. Uh, the the individual sweep. Cherry Lucas is gonna grab five here and advance with the Marcus Turner. Um, unfortunate for Bryce and James White with uh, a total of two points, but one of the most unexpected flips and bounces and acrobatics that I've ever seen here on the channel. And that's saying something, considering all the nonsense we've seen in past races. Anyone who's a longtime watcher is uh, is nose of the nonsense let's go to the next set of four here near side I believe that's one Maddox sports then we have team Dur 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 <laughs> number 38 Samuel and Lady <laughs> Lightning you got, I, listen I know they don't give me a pronunciation guy they don't do that because they don't have that okay here we go it looks like the, mm, the team Dirto truck is gonna. Let's just go with the uh, DRT 3K. I mean, is that like supposed to like represent a word? Here we go. Lady Lightning with two, and then following behind Samuel. Uh, my boys. I'm a little bit out of sorts here, comprehending the last cheat and getting into this one. But uh, just bear with me here. Five points for the DTR 3K, DRT 3K. We're just gonna call them the 3K. I like that, 3K. We have the 3K, the Lady Lightning, the one Matic Sports, and the Samuel. Near side Lady Lightning with the one Matic, uh, one Matic Sports, and then the 3K and the Samuel there on the far side. One Matic here, looking about a length behind here, but close, but close, chance for an overtake. Next turn, here goes the 3K, up by a length, maybe, final turn, acceleration maybe down the back straight. Oh, the one, the 3K loses some ground. He is just ahead, will he be nudged across? No, the one Matic almost nudged across far side. The 3K was not able to stay straight, and the one Matic tried to find the line and even had some help from the Samuel, but unfortunately it still wasn't enough. And the 3K looking for a partial sweep here. Two fives always builds that suspense, so we gotta bring it down here. One Matic Sports still with two threes is still in the game. Actually, everyone's still in the game for the advancement, but uh, as far as first place, one Matic. I believe in him. He's had some speed. Look at the acceleration on the far side. This could be interesting. 3K holding pace. One Matic taking over even with outside lines. Looks like he hesitated on the rail there for a second. Only down a couple lengths. How will the acceleration down the back straight look? And the 3K can't hold his footing once again, but straightens out and has way too much room to work with. And, well, where's the one o -Matic? Somehow he lost ground, and the Samuel with two ones grabs a three, and the Lady Lightning... Well, parks herself about three lengths from the end. And that will kind of... I don't know how that happened. Just uh, loss of speed in the transition uh, off camera. A lot of zigzagging for the one Matic down this back straight. It can't be good. You gotta pick a line and stick with it unless there's a reason to be finding other lines. Heat four. 3K. Looking for the partial sweep. Near side. One Matic looking to break that. He will probably be going to the finals here with the 3K, but he doesn't want to go there with that part with that partial sweep threat. Here we go. One Matic holding pace down a few lengths. Looks like those inside lines are actually a little harder for the one Matic to stay fast in. 3K way out in front here. Down the back straight. One Matic. Mm, no acceleration, and the 3K is gonna have an open camera. And oh wow. <laughs> Samuel goes up and over. The pillow there. And that will end in the same order. One, uh, one Matic will be 
moving on. But uh, there is a threat for an individual sweep as we run to the finals. Here we go. Finals, Cherry Lucas, Marcus Turner, one Matic, and the 3K. Near side, we got from the first group, and far side, the second. Rounding that first turn, looking strong here in the near side is that Marcus Turner. Cherry Lucas holding pace, though. Seems like he's improved over the course of the first few races, but it is that second group that's holding quite a strong vanguard in this one. 3K, big turn here. Up a few legs, and the one Matic loses footing. He was only a couple legs back, and now he's way far back. He will somehow manage to straighten out and finish second. Cherry Lucas third and Marcus Turner fourth, but... Man, he had a chance to go up for a win, and he skidded through the rail. This is not skateboarding. He's got to figure that out. One Matic. And figure it out quick. 5-3-2-1. Well, 5 3 one, two, if I read from the bottom. I just said the numbers out loud. I don't... That might have not been very helpful, actually. 3K with 5, though. We know that. He's three away from the second individual sweep, it would be, of this tournament. On the near side, the 3K. One Matic looking on the far side, trying to hold a pace. Again, only down a few lengths. It's always a few lengths. It's always just a few lengths. He's got to get his wheels turning here in the lane straights so he has a chance. Only a few lengths again. 3K holding the lead. Acceleration to the far side, and the one Matic is not fast enough. Not fast enough. It was there, he saw a gap on the far side, some good zigging and zagging from the 3K, but it just was not close enough. And the 3K still in threat position. Cherry Lucas and Marcus Turner may be out of this one at this point. Uh, unless the 3K gets two ones, but I can't see that happening. Near side, the 3K with the one Matic. On the far side, take a look at the Marcus Turner. I thought he would have had more uh, speed here, and maybe this time he is starting to speed up, but it's just not enough. 3K against that one Matic. Oh, big acceleration here. He's up now two, three lengths. One Matic's got to take it back here on the inside line. He's only a few lengths behind as per usual. He has to work down here in the back stretch. 3K extending a lead. Oh, and darting through the finish line like, it, <laughs> like it's not even there. That is a fast finish, and that's going to ensure him the victory, but not yet the individual sweep, and it is... Uh, Every other vehicle's pride to remove an individual sweep opportunity from a Victor car, even if they've already secured a win. So I can tell you right now, this one Matic Sports would love nothing more than to overtake the 3K here. So he's going to be doing his best. Near side, the one Matic. Far side, the 3K. This is for the individual sweep already a length ahead. There has to be just some sort of mishap for the 3K down the back straight or some slowdown here. Maybe these outside hairpins will look better for the one Matic. Right now they do. Length and even. And ooh, the 3K got out of that turn a lot better. It might be tough down here to the back straight. Only a few lengths behind. The 3K spins, but the one Matic pushes him forward with all the momentum he's got. And that will do it. Two individual sweeps on the tournament. The 3K tribute racing, at least only on races and fun, have both individually sweeped. That's two out of three. The one Matic had his chance but found the wrong line, and that will do it. Congrats to the 3K tribute racing. Got to recognize him again. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to see you next time as Suspense builds here at the Mail in Tournament. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and, and you may notice that some cars will really get out there early in the straights, in the single straights, and, and be fast, and even in the hairpins hold a good lead, but uh, then for some reason struggle uh, down that wide track backstretch towards the finish line. But more obviously, I feel like we've seen way more vehicles be at, mediocre at best in the beginning straights, and then absolutely run with the acceleration, like blast off like from a rocket when they get to that back straight, that wide track where there's more room to run. I think that's going to be important here. Sometimes you get cars like this one right here, this is the Brandon SRC, who are just absolutely so fast on the uh, single lane track, it almost doesn't even matter when you get to the final straight, but uh, 
with a little bit of a closer race, slower cars who can accelerate here in the backstretch can really cause some trouble. Brandon SRC will pick up the first five, and the, the other three just, they, they need to do something quick. But notice those differences in skill. There's always a weakness in a car at some point on the track, or at least most of the time. Number 50, the Brandon SRC, and he's coming out with a bang here. The Blade in Hire, number 52, Ryan Kelly, the 49, and Jack Reservoir, the 51. And, uh, well, it's looking relatively dominant right now, but I think the Jack Reservoir is, uh, 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 listen, if I'm not pronouncing that right, you're just out of luck, okay? The rest of the rest of where though, holding pace this time. Maybe some uh, fight is going to happen here in the back straight. Here comes the Brandon. He's on the rail, but he's pushed forward by the rest of where, and that's another five for the Brandon. He, uh, well, hit a stroke of luck, even in his misfooting, but his misfooting just ended up blocking Jack. So there was just no option but Jack to ram right into him, and that just straightened him out. So not much that could have happened there, even if he hadn't made contact. The rest of where, and I see potential. Blade and Har, I'd like to see more out of the, the gate from him. Maybe this time, he's holding a nose on him uh, here into the first turn. But it's just through the hairpins where he slows down. That's the thing. Um, and I wonder if some of these, uh, these, these um, mailers remembered to really check how these cars did them on hairpins before he sent him in. This time, the rest of where? Way faster. Where's the Brandon? Did he forget how to race? And Jack is your new leader. Well, not quite, but at least in this race. Uh, wow. Oh, big pass at the end. Slow, but uh, certain. The Bladenhar. Well, he'll run. Uh, he'll run through for two points there. Look, look at the look at the speed here. Oh, spun around twice, uh, even thrice, and the Bladenhar just cruises right by at about three miles an hour. Incredible. Ryan Kelly could use the speed up. Heat four, and this will decide it. I think we know which two are likely to advance here, but well, I'm always up, I'm always ready for an upset. I don't think numerically is possible though. Near side, the Brandon, the rest of where. Holding thing. Right now, there's no chance for any individual sweeping. Right, that's been blocked out, and rightfully so. It's just been happening quite a bit lately. The rest of where holding pace. Here's some acceleration. Near side hairpin turn, and the rest of where down only a few lengths. Brandon SRC to the back stretch, up a few lengths. They are both fast into the back straight, and Jack has not enough time to catch up. Bladen Hire followed by the Ryan Kelly, and there's your order. Jack, I think, has potential here come the finals. It's about how they get out of the gate and attack the hairpins. Let's see how this next heat goes. I will say that first race was might have been an aberration because I, Brandon got out to such a lead there, and, I mean, Jack, Jack didn't seem like he had any speed at all, so I think it was something going on there. So if that straightens itself out, it could be very close indeed. 53, the Flying Donut, NDR 54, 55, Heather Anderson, and 56, Jonathan. Um, we're all out on this one. And we'll get a, a sense of who's our fast racer this time. Looks like NDR is holding a commanding lead. Anyone else going to challenge him? A really tiny looking red car there, but has a lot of power. And he's going to pick up the first five. The camera is empty as opposed to, uh, with the exception of him. And I think that's the Jonathan coming next. And last but not least, Heather. But again, that first race is not always the, the telling race, as we saw. Like, other cars may accelerate come, come this next round here. NDR with five. And a good start for him. He's a, it's a, it's a Camaro. And he's out to a big lead once again, so this is going to be quite a fast course for him. NDR, who looks like the Flying Donut has something to say about it. He might be pushing back in, but the hairpins are just so slow for him. He's trying to accelerate, but there's no time. There's no chance. He's just too slow in the hairpins. The Flying Donut, uh, sorry, the NDR, only one on screen once again. And, ooh, he almost uh, did himself in by turning there, but uh, he'll cross. 
The flying donut was close there, though. The flying donut was... I saw acceleration down that back straight. See, look, there's a big gap, and then he hit off the rail, and the flying donut was only a length or two behind as he crossed. So, so don't rule him out quite yet. Maybe over the next few races he'll improve. Jonathan also staying in there as well. Heather. Has some work to do. We're in heat three, but uh, it's not looking good. Near side, the Heather with the Jonathan. And the Donut and the, and the NDR take up that far side lane. NDR, as they head down, it's a big lead once again. Maybe Jonathan trying to accelerate this time, but a hairpin. You just see the speed lost in the hairpin. Not so with the NDR. It's, it's smooth as butter as he turns through those hairpins. Here's the last one for him. Big lead once again. Ooh, struggled a little bit again into the back straight, but smoothed, smoothens out, and there's another win. Jonathan this time being faster. The Flying Donut, ooh, I hope he crosses for his sake. He needs those two points. You can hear the crowd noise and the announcer amping up here. Some sort of noise there. I don't know what that was. Heather stuck. Long delay before the replay, even. And, uh, yeah, the donut got stuck there sideways, and the Heather just knocked him forward. So. There's, the, there's the revelation of what happened there. And there's three fives for the NDR working on a partial sweep. I have to be honest, though. I'm not as positive. I'm not as, um, uh, man, I just lost the word. But if I was going to bet on the NDR to be an individual sweeper, I, I think I'd be hesitant because we have some fast cars in the other group. So I'm a little concerned for him in that sense. But partial sweep looking very certain right now. Rounding that final hairpin. Looking good. No one in sight once again. NDR down the back straight for the first set of four fives. And he, well, he'll get it. Followed by the Jonathan who will outdo the Flying Donut and move on with him. And the Heather left behind once again. Maybe the tires weren't lubed up or something. I don't know. I'm not to prepare the vehicles just to call over them. Oh, wow. The Flying Donut advanced. Numerically, I, I thought it was the other way around, so I was a little confused there, but, uh... Well, no, well, now it's showing the Jonathan. Okay, the Jonathan advanced. I was right about that. I think there should there was a number miscue um, on the scoreboard. Otherwise, we're totally fine. Right? Because if you count the races, the Jonathan definitely had more threes than the, the Flying Donut. So, and... and we're good there. It's as expected and as the races show. NDR, far side. Brandon holding pace, still behind a few lengths. Oh, the NDR bumbles a little bit as he gets to the back straight, but still has space. Oh, the jack. He almost overtook Brandon in the last second. And Jonathan left far behind. Well, actually, not that far behind, I will say. It's the NDR, though. Just absolutely killer out there anyone to challenge he's still working on a possible third individual sweep of this tournament anything from the rest of where anything from the SRC would be nice just to put him in his place show him that he's not the only vehicle that can pick up a first place SRC looks slow compared to the NDR have to be honest I mean what is going on out there back straight Little bit of miscue. Oh, here comes the Brandon. Oh, but he runs into him. No. Oh, no. That was a line he needed to find. Look at the acceleration down the back straight. We almost had a car leave the rails, and there was the speed, but a good zigging and zagging from the NDR. And Brandon gets wrong. Could have had a whoa, amazing comeback. Brandon, only chance, only one with a real chance to overtake at this point. Focus on the SRC. This is important. NDR. Looking to sweep individually. He has six wins. He needs two more. Brandon on the far side. He's got to stay fast here. 
Rounding that curve. Ooh, it's not looking good. It's just such a gap between them. It's like this car race is on a different level. This one really might be liable to win this whole thing. Here comes the Brandon. Any acceleration? No, I saw him hit off the ledge. There is no chance. Oh, wow. NDR. Unbelievable. Jonathan's going to slip in there and grab two again. Uh... And I think, I think we have a winner, but again, individual sweep opportunities. NDR. For the third individual sweep of the tournament. And I will say that that second uh, video with end count who won, he wasn't far off. I believe it was six or seven wins straight. Brandon with a lead for a moment. NDR fighting his way back in, but down a couple lengths. Brandon's got a chance to end the sweep opportunity. Inside line for the SRC. NDR had to go outside. It's close. This could be a chance to put it away. NDR in trouble here. The individual sweep will not come up. He'll come up short. The last race from five to three, and only two cars will claim the title of individual sweeper. So far in this one, NDR, if anyone would have done it, I would have expected him, but unfortunately, not so. He will be a force to be reckoned with in the final. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Races and Fun channel. There are your four that are advancing. I know for some vehicles out there, it did not go so well. And that's just kind of how it goes down. Only one can win from each video. But we've seen some excellent racing from one, some wonderful acrobatics and some really interesting maneuvers out there on the track. Two individual sweeps so far. Two very close to that title. And we have our next set of eight here. Let me remind you as we get going here in the first one that uh, the eight cars that verse each other are, are eight in order. As you can see, this is 73 through, uh, I believe, all the way through 80 or 81, whatever the number is. And it's always in order like that based on the submission number. Sometimes, I, as far as which groups appear on Races and Fun and which groups appear on Diecast Racing TV, that's a little randomized. Um, so you might see 73 through 81 here, and then all the way up to 100, next one's like 100 to 108 or whatever. Um, here, here comes Terrio Racing here, and Micah, pretty close, here comes Micah! Oh, I thought that <laughs> Terry almost stopped there, and I was, I was freaked out for a moment, but, uh, uh, it kind of sorts itself out. I see there the Arlo logo, and I'm reminded to never pronounce that name wrong again. It's not Arlo, it is Arlo. I apologize, and I will be sure to follow through on that in the future. Good job, Terrier Racing. So, it is randomized, but it always is eight numbers in order as far as the actual eight cars that will verse for anyone who's confused or wondering about that fairness. And eight videos will end up on Backcast Racing TV, and of course, eight here on Races and Fun. This, along with this, I want to remind you, join the Discord if you haven't already. We are considering some new ideas, and we might need your help over there, and that's a great place to interact with fans and everything. Here comes Micah around the far side there with a big lead this time. I don't see anything from Terry. Down towards the final straight, Micah bounds off the wall. Big lead, and he's going to pick up... Wow. Slow down as well. Here comes Terry. But uh, he's going to pick up five. Jeremiah may not be with us for this weekend or Tuesday, but he will be back as well. Want to throw that out there. Um, and here, uh, here's Kerry Wilson stopped there on the track. As he is, I believe, away on vacation. Something of the sorts. But he will be around soon, I believe. I think that's all the housekeeping information I can think of here as we, as we make our way through this first round. Two races in. And let's get a sense of a races here. Micah has been fast. He was fast in the first, uh, in the second heat. Terrio Racing was a little faster in the first one. Now this time, Rob B getting out to an early lead, but loses it all in the hairpin. And I think that's what's happened almost every time for him too. Um, just 
Struggles on the hairpins. It, it seems like the pickup truck's not good for those sharper turns. Um, I think that's been the detriment here. Here comes Micah, near side, few lengths up again. Will there be a, that speed loss again later on in this back straight? They're pretty close. Here comes Terry, near side. He's got room to run, but they both slow down. Two lengths between them. And Kerry and Rob B follow in short order. Still spots left in the, the Mario Kart mail-in tournament. That's the other thing I wanted to say. Listen once again, still spots left in that mail-in tournament. About 20 races and fun Facebook. If you want to submit, please be going over there and offering um, up your Mario Kart racing model cars if you so desire. I recommend it, especially if you didn't perform as desired in this tournament. There's another chance, especially since you can submit two cars. It gives you a lot of chance to at least make it to some of the distance. So I can encourage you to go there once more. That being said, now all the, I think the housekeeping is done here. Micah on the near side, up a few lengths. Here comes Terrio Racing, trying to pull it back in and pick up another win if he can. Near side, trying to tie with Micah it would be, and it's just too much of a distance, and Micah's going to hold out. Here comes Kerry, Rob B, with a nudge at the end. And we have our two advancing cars, Micah being our best so far, even though Terry came out winner in the first one. Let's keep looking forward towards the next heat here. Terry and Micah, we'll see him again. I think Terry has potential in the, uh, the finals. It's just gonna depend on the speed out of the gate. Heat one, next set of four, 77 through 80, Ryan McLaughlin. Laughlin, Laughlin, um, C. Deuce Riley, Joshua Thompson, and John Cladis. Cladis. Oh, I know I'm gonna get that wrong. Um, we have an odd vehicle here. I don't really know what to make of the John Cladis. Cladis um, on the on the far side here, but it's it's really it's really holding quite the speed. I mean, look at that thing. It looks like it's out of space. Big wheels in the back. Oh my god, he spins at the end and he almost loses the race! Joshua Thompson runs across with another weird looking vehicle. And somehow, I, I think the John Cladis, Cladis won here. Maybe not. He might have lost out on five points. Who do we give it to? We do not give it to the Thompson. It looks like that thing was built out of Legos or something. I mean, that's... The Deuce Riley, also an odd-looking car, though I've, we've seen that model before. The, the, the most standard-looking car here is the Ryan. The Ryan. Um, I'm not even going to try with the, the last name. You just going to have to bear with me. The Ford. And, uh, uh, well, he's kind of bringing up the rear here. John on the near side. On the far side, the Thompson. Down the hill they go. Thompson holding more speed this time. He might have some length in the back stretch. John trying to hold on here, and Thompson is just too fast. He's going to have camera to himself. Slows down again. We're losing. Sp wow. Okay, well, John is pushed across evenly by the two lagging vehicles, of which I think Cedus Riley finished it about a half a nose ahead. Look at that. See, they're pushing across, but Deuce Riley pushes a little bit more, and we'll get two points there. Um, John with three. And I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense here of the kind of vehicles we have here. I've never seen these two models that are now both here on the near side against each other. I mean, one really does. It, like, it looks like it's made out of Legos or something. And the other one just looks like it, 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 it spends its time dodging asteroids, you know, up by Neptune. I mean, it's just it's just the look of it. John Cladis. Cladis sounds more spacey, so we'll call it that. He just loses all the speed. He's spaced out right there on the track. Here comes the Thompson. What about the Deuce Riley? Back in the game here. Chance for a five. They slow down at the end like usual, but it is the Deuce Riley absolutely back in this one. Cladis only with one point. And now there is an open door. Ryan will pick up two there, but I think it's 
It's getting to be out of the question here. Thompson, 353. Three. That's 11. Cladis, 531. That's going to be 9. Let's see. The Deuce Riley, I believe 522 two also indeed makes 9. Deuce Riley, take a look at him on the near side. Chance to beat out Cladis. Even beat out Thompson with a good race here. Don't count him out quite yet. Might be a comeback opportunity. Started slow and sped up. Here's the Deuce Riley near side. Up by a nose. Loses the nose. Loses is the length but has inside hairpin he's up by a length again Cladis is way behind in last place Ryan in front of him as well Thompson here down by a length to the back straight he's pushed forward the deuce Riley big length lead and the Riley comes back with two fives and a big on his head swap the Cladis finishing backwards and well that's now the direction he needs to start going straight back home as he spaced out too early That was a little harsh. Sorry. Sorry, John. <laughs> uh. But uh it was it was it was quite a race. It really it really flipped itself on his head. I was impressed by the Deuce Riley, who's now got a good shot here in the finals. Terrier Racing and Micah from the first one. Riley Thompson from the second one. Here we go. Into the finals. One will advance. Who will it be? Micah fast for a second but loses out that lead. Now it's the Thompson in his Lego looking vehicle. Far side, big, oh, he has the inside the hairpin here. That's why it's been so easy for him. Thompson here, another inside turn, down towards the finish line. He goes, hits off the wall, big run to the finish, and that will give him five. Here comes Micah for three, then Terry. And, well, unfortunately for the Deuce Riley, another bad start. But again, we saw him make up ground. And if the Thompson is that dominant here in the first race, we know the Deuce Riley can beat the Thompson and did so twice. Uh, any car is still in this. And Micah was fast and close. Terry not far behind either. This could be a good one. Near side the Thompson. Far side the Deuce Riley. In the middle there, the two from the first heat. The first group, sorry. Let's see the Deuce Riley. Ooh, wow, super fast out of that first turn. Now he's going to be a threat position here. Near side, not looking good for the Thompson. Far side, Riley looking good. Here comes another turn up by a length. He's trying to hold that lead down the hill. He starts to accelerate. You can see the speed coming out. Terry holding length with him even though he's on the outside line. Thompson trying to stay in there as well. He's got speed. The Terry on the far side finds the gap and passes him. The Thompson nose block and Micah is stopped short of the finish line. I don't even think the Thompson made it across. He might for just touching the line, but none of the car got over it. The Terry gets across on the far side, a wild race, and I think two cars are gonna come. Oh, they did give it to the Thompson. He got some of the car over the beginning of the line, and I think that's enough. So the Thompson lucks out by a fraction with two points. Terry on the far side there. He now holds seven with a win. A wonderful pass there on the back straight. Deuce Riley's got to up his skills. He's got to stay sharp there in the back straight, even when he has the lead. He lost out there because he wasn't focused on lines. There was no zigging and zagging for him. No defensive driving. Deuce Riley with a chance once again. Inside line. He's out on a lead. Micah takes it back, though. Terry zigging and zagging. Keeps the Deuce Riley behind. He's back to last place, and Micah comes across in first. Thompson stuck in there with only two points again. Micah now shifting the points back towards his favor, and it might be an interesting finals. Terry there with 10 points. Thompson there with nine. And uh, I, I didn't get a look at the other two. We will right here as we get started on Heat 4. This could be big. Micah with eight. There's a chance. There's a chance for any of them except for the Deuce Riley, who unfortunately picked up another one. Well, I, eh, well technically DNF, and he gets first, but... It's very unlikely. Micah has a chance. He's back in it. Here comes a Terry, who's only up on him two points. A Micah win, which shifted back in his direction. Same with a Thompson win. Any of these three cars in it. I don't see the Deuce Riley anywhere. He's out. Here comes Micah. Oh, no. He's behind. The Thompson tries to push past, but loses control on the Terry. It will be the Terry. He'll come across. And he started shaky, barely advanced, and comes across here in first once again. Points-wise, he was the most skilled car out there on the track today. And he will advance, clearly, to that next round. What 
a way to finish. I did not expect, I would expect the Thompson, the Mica more likely, but anything can happen here on the track. Congratulations to the Terry. You'll be heading to the finals with these four other monster racers. Subscribe and we'll see you next time on Races and Fun. Also hit that notification bell. I never mentioned that, but you should... I mean, that's going to tell you when we post a video. It's more convenient. Um, so, do, so do that too. I don't usually throw that out there. Notification bell. It's right by the subscribe button or whatnot. That, uh, well, submitted cars into this mail-in tournament, and so we're able to get their signs up there. Hey, everybody, by the way, I'm still Brendan. And I, I encourage you guys to check out those other places, like like Arlo and Expanded Universe and Slanman Customs, I think it's called. And there's a bunch of other ones there, but you know, I'm, I'm working off the top of my head here. Just, uh, you know, they work hard, I'm sure, I'm, and their companies and channels and whatever they do. And so definitely appreciate them a lot and appreciate that they submitted cars in. And if they're over there on their channels and companies talking about this tournament, well, can't thank them enough as well. We get going here. Next eight, 81 to 88. Do one above Justin Trotter, Daniel MG, and Douglas Kimball. First four here to race in this video six. There's only two more after this, at least for the races and fun side, until the finals will come. And we'll have do one, do one above, not do one above, do one above. Uh, coming in there with an easy five. You're just way out in front. Look at the replay there. You see, well, eh, some catch up there maybe. But, uh... A lot of distance so far. It has been a long tournament. The last video was, I think, the first one where there wasn't an individual sweep threat by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of mix of, of racers and skill levels, and you just saw a lot of interesting finishes. And a lot of cars win who you wouldn't expect to even be winning. Very close, though... See, uh, seeing how the one above is doing, uh, they might flop back towards that individual sweep threat. But this time, Daniel MG, big lead here. Might be out of the question, actually, in this set of four. Daniel MG, the one above is fast here in the near side, but there's not enough space. And Daniel MG will, will grab his first set of five points. And with that... This set of four is locked into an even battle, even leaving room for Justin Trotter to work his way back in if he can pick up a few, well, five here. Douglas also close and in there. Um, got second in the first race, so I wouldn't count him out yet either. Near side, the MG, along with the Kimball. Rounding that first hairpin, looking like the MG again, building a big lead here. The one above, just where did the speed go, right? I mean, it's just, it just seems to be lacking here. MG, a lot of chances here down the back straight. Might be a chance for another five. He speeds towards the finish, and I think he's going to knock the Justin Trotter out of uh, contention. The one above, a little faster here than the Kimball, and we'll pick up, I'll pick up a solid three. Well, he's got 11 points now to one above. But the MG there with 12. Only holding out there by one, but it's close. The King Kimball is still in it. He's got eight. Oh, well, he's got seven, sorry. But seven's enough. He still, he still could, in theory, tie things up and, uh, and win if he manages to win this race. It's just going to be hard for him. He's not able to get out into the lead. Looks like the MG fast once again. The one above trying to stay in it. It's close to one above. Near side, far side. He zigs and zags, but oh, almost is beat out by the Kimball. He'll come in second, though. And the MG with another five. Bad start, I guess, in that first race. And then he took three straight fives. And you know the two that will be advancing. I think it's obvious at this point. 81 and 83. Let's get the second group going. Jammo, Grandpa Lance, Cody Irons, and Gravedigger. That's a good set of cars here. Let me try to get a sense of him here. Jammo near side, looking pretty solid. The rumble through that first turn. That may not be good. 
And then on the far side, we got the Gravedigger speeding. Well, I mean, that's a healthy lead if I've ever seen one. Look at the speed on that thing. The camera can't even keep up. Far side there. He stretches out towards the finish line, and he's got himself an easy five. Holy crap. I don't even know how to respond knowing that speed. He looks like, I, I mean, honestly, visually, I, I mean, he, he looks like 1.5 times the, the Daniel MG. So this could be, this could be a dominant day. But, you know, things change race to race, so you never know. Cody Irons was the one to pick up three, so maybe eyes on him as well. It was the Grandpa Lance who came up the rear, though, and he, he's off to a tough start. I think it's a spoilers in there. Not the spoilers, the, the giant pipes. I don't really know what to call those. I'm not a car expert, but um, I mean, that might be slowing him down a little bit. Here comes the grave digger. Holy crap, this thing is fast, fast, fast. No other cars even close by. And he's going to take it across the line here. I mean, there comes Jammo there. And the Cody Irons and Grandpa finishes backwards. Is that not? Those aren't pipes. Those are, that's like a wrench. It's like a wrench head. Maybe the replay will reveal that even better. Yeah, that's a whole ass wrench head. What, what is that? Is I thought it was one of those giant like spoiler pipes or whatever. Usually that you see on those hot rods. That that is a that is a full wrench head on the back of the HW tools. Okay, written on the side. I guess that makes sense now. Near side, Cody Irons, Grave Digger. Oh, look at the lead build right there. You can just see, you can count the lengths as they build up quickly here. He's at like 10, 12. 15, 20 lengths ahead at this point. Come down towards that last turn. You're still building with maybe even upwards of 30 there. The whole turn in betwixt them. And here he comes to the finish line with another five. It, it, it's it's easy right now for him. Here's the Cody Irons. Wow, nose block and full roadblock. Spun into it. And he holds out for another three points. He's looking good for advance as well. But it all comes down to this last race from the, the other three cars' perspective. 3-2-3, the 3 two, one on the Jammo, so that there's a chance here. I, I will say I don't really know what the plan of one of the other three cars is should they advance. I don't really know what the where you go from there. I mean, it's one thing if you're losing by a few lengths, if you're making some mistakes, but, I mean, we're talking about a car who's just out 10, 20, 30 lengths even by the time he finishes. I mean, look at the straightaway here. This is, like, 12 already. I mean, it is it is unmatchable. And so, I don't know, even if the Jammo here comes down and takes it, what, what is the plan come in the, in the finals? Here's the Jammo for three, and the Cody Irons does get two, so that's enough for him to advance. And Jammo will come up one point short, I believe so, numerically. Grandpa... Only five points there, though. That's not the worst we've seen. We've seen four points before. I think we might have seen three, but definitely four. And we'll see the Cody Irons here in the finals with the Gravedigger. Daniel MG, the one above. They're the only two that seem to have any hope maybe against the Gravedigger just because we haven't seen him race against the Gravedigger yet. Already lagging behind. Maybe the MG can hold pace, though, and make something happen in the final straight. I, it's hard to tell. Here comes the big outside turn. I know he's working with inside versus outside line, so that may affect in the future races. Already many lengths ahead. No visual on the Cody Irons, I guess. I, I don't even know. Gravedigger's way ahead here. He's working on an individual sweep. He's got five. I don't really know what the... I mean, this is this is the, this is kind of speed and also a car model that I just feel like we haven't seen before. And I don't even know how this would even compare to, say, Tribute Racing, um, who was, I mean, who had this kind of speed, but maybe not to this degree in the first video and end count... I'm um, blanking on the name of the Video 3's individual sweeper, but I remember, um, oh no, that would be the uh, NDR. No, the NDR was Video 4 and came up just short. So I'm blanking on Video 3, but I mean, I mean, just, just, you know, fill in the names. I mean, this just seems like even exceeding that capability, but we don't really know how these other cars compare to them. Here comes the Gravedigger. No one even close. Even the MG, not even close. And there's number six. Oh, wow. 
I mean, like, I, I don't want to downplay the sheer difficulty and honorability of the individual sweep. It is a very hard thing to do, to win eight times in a row, um, especially when you have a, a, a basket of eight cars that are all racing against each other. It is very hard to be that consistent. It is very wonderful and honorable and um, noteworthy, it is a better word, to be able to do that. But, I mean, the Grave Digger is just making it look easy. The Grave Digger is making it not even look like an achievement. That's really how fast he is right now. Struggles around that one turn. Daniel MG, maybe a chance here. Will he challenge the sweep? They're close. Please, MG, make some noise. But it's just too quiet. Grave Digger. Seven wins. And not even a close race yet. Whoever put this car in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Grave Digger's won, okay? He's won already. That's 15 points. <laughs> I thought the MG was good. The Grave Digger. If he doesn't get an individual sweep, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. The MG, I think, is the only one who's got a shot. Grave Digger has an outside line this time. MG working on the inside lines. Maybe there's a chance. Right now, it's still close. MG trying to hold on. Even the one above still in there. But look at that acceleration. Here to the next straight. MG trying to hold some speed. Trying to keep himself in the game. Both with inside lines. To the final. And the Grave Digger's passed by the one above. He swerves as he enters and the fastest car I've ever seen will come up short of an individual sweep. I, I, I can't even believe it. I can't even believe what I just saw. He'll come up short of an individual sweep when he was up 30 lengths almost every other race. He will advance and he will be a force in the finals, but unbelievable to see that pass. Don't want above has got to at least be happy about that. But deservingly so, <laughs> the Grave Digger advances. Spots available in the Mario Kart Mail-In Tournament. You know that. Make sure you're getting over there to submit. <laughs> Facebook page, link in the description. Same with the Discord. Subscribe, all that. Notification bell. Page of races and fun if you're looking for it. Please check that out and submit if you haven't already and you're interested. Join the Discord number two if you have not already. We have a lot going on there. Um, chances to talk with other fans and with me and with... Even races and fun if you got questions, all sorts of things. Number three, make sure you're checking out the Diecast Racing TV channel, which is running the parallel side of this tournament, of which those best eight racers will compete against these in the big finals later on in the mail in tournament. And number four, hey everybody, I'm Brendan. First out of four, Team M and, uh, MSM, oops, Caleb Starr, Micah, and SCM. As we roll out here. And uh, it looks like MSM is just <laughs> blowing the door off this thing right from the start. Look at him race down to the finish, loses footing for a second, manages it, and about 20, 30 lengths ahead, he's got a big win. SEM and Micah will cross later and very slowly, unfortunately, Caleb Star to round things out here in the first race. It has been a long tournament. And uh, we're looking forward to those finals and just collecting the last few who deserve to be there. Heat 2. And maybe some glimmer of hope from anything else out there. I mean, it looks like Team MSM is the clear speedster right now, but maybe a few other cars can be a part of that. Mike on the far side is that. Maybe he's got a chance. He's, eh, he's starting to lose that lead here down the third straight. The last turn, he's still in it. He's still on the screen, but um, uh, I think the MSM would have to make a mistake, and he's not making a mistake. Right down the center, swerves a little, but straightens out. But at least Mike is on the screen this time. It's uh, progress, not perfection, but that's all we look for. I mean, some cars are just fast. Some cars are just way too fast. Team MSM, and I'm expecting at least a partial sweep here. We'll see what the other four look like. Maybe Micah can turn things around. He'll probably be that secondary 
card. I mean, he looks like he's, there's a possibility. He just does not have to speed out of the gate. You see he's already dropping back, and, and that's cool. Oh, I thought that was the MSM who lost the footing there, but I think it was uh, Caleb. And it's just, see, through that second hairpin, it starts to fall apart. The speed differential, the expanding lead, and it's just, um, you can see it kind of run its course here down the back straight. No mistakes from the MSM, and he's going to pick up the third. Caleb Starr at uh, cruising speed will come through and pick up another one. Though even if he gets four ones here, he's done better than some cars because with, with a DNF here and there, I think we've seen some three-pointers. Three fives. Heat four. And we'll get him going once again there on the far side. You see him as out. Down towards that third straight. Still a big lead. Rounds the inside. Micah starting to lose screen time at this point. And I think another race to the finish. And we got a partial sweep on the way. Ooh, might have been a problem there, but he straightened out. Oh, we got a backwards finish from SCM who picks up another three. And Caleb bringing it up at the end. And there you have it. A very quick, clean, simple, straight four wins. We do have a tiebreaker for second. So I guess this one will be more exciting. Let's roll them out. Near side, Micah, far side, SCM. Micah out by a lead. The SCM has bested him twice and one time backwards, so I think anything can happen here, but it looks like Micah has the acceleration early on. Down that third straight where things start to separate, and it's a big difference. Micah, near side, pulling for it as best he can. And it's closer. Micah, but he's straight down the middle here, and even though there's some lead... Um, squishing that gap small it was still easy win for Micah we're gonna roll out again I, I, I always forget this is the best two out of three which makes sense in the Maryland tournament you really want to confirm that a car is ready to move on um, but I always build it up like it's a one no matter. Far side, Micah. Couple lengths this time. This time it looks like the inside lines are a big benefit to the SCM. Oh, no, they're not inside lines. They're just a change of lane. Sorry about that. But the change of lane, big benefit. They're closer, but he loses that lead and slows down on the final hairpin. Speeding up here again, but not enough time. Maybe the inside hairpins would be a, an addition. An advantage. But he won't stick around and be able to try that. The best two out of three has been closed. Advancing, MSM and Micah. Second group, Heat 1. Robert Fisk, Jeremy Hughes, MDG, and Luke West. And I don't... I know we noticed this in the first, in the unboxing, but we do have a Mario Kart submission in this tournament. I don't... I don't really know how it's going to fare against these real cars, but Shy Guy is in there, in the B-Dasher. <laughs> it does make me laugh a little. It does make me laugh a little. And I'm enjoying that. So thank you for the person who submitted that. I think that's the MDG who's going to start strong here. Um, oh, Shy Guy. He got overtaken, and he's backwards, and he's going to cruise across with Robert Fisk and start with two points. I forget how a shy guy in a B dasher norm mm, he got spun there normally performs in Mario Kart. Um, in the Mario Kart tournaments, I I, I know he's on the f I don't remember that kart combo being the fastest one. So maybe Mario Kart would have a chance against Hot Wheels, but with the with the best choice. But uh, this one off to a mediocre start. Near side the shy guy already losing some ground. Looks like MDG is the big one to stand out here. Races like this, where we have dominant group stages, usually do make for exciting finals, though. MDG on the far side, building that lead. But we do have a look here from, I believe that's the Robert Fisk. 
who's trying to speed up. He's not that far behind, but there's still some room. And speeding across the MD MDG here with five again. This time to Jeremy Hughes. He's uh, going to pick up only one point. MDG. And he's looking for the partial sweep as well. Near side. Shy guy with him. Shy guy way behind. Not the Mario Kart cart that was best for this tournament. I would have gone with a Donkey Kong on the sports scoop. Now that would have been a good choice. Because you got speed and you got weight. You got weight in a car like that. Here's MDG. Ooh, swerving, but he's fine his way. So that guy almost runs up into second place but loses out. And the fist is going to cruise once again. Luigi in a Mach 8. Shy Guy in a standard cart. Lightweight, but very fast. But I guess no one really was to know how it would fare. Heat 4. And it's looking pretty obvious. MDG stretching out an early lead. got it going. He's rounding that final hairpin and he's looking towards the finish line and it's looking pretty simple. There's a car on the screen on the far side but I'm not really sure if there's anything to make of it. Here he comes in with maybe the Fisk had a chance and spun out in the transition. He gave it everything he's got and unfortunately he just couldn't control himself into the final area. He actually could have removed that partial sweep. We have a stuck vehicle Shy Guy, somehow on a course literally made to be impossible to get stuck on, has been stuck. He, and it's not even a weird situation. He's absolutely just stopped there. Wheel fell off the track. I mean, this course was made so that cars don't get stuck. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. And still, the impossible occurs. Advancing, of course, the MDG, and this time the Jeremy Hughes, who had the right amount of... No, second place finishes. Heat one here in the finals. We have two concerning advancements and we have two very obvious ones. You can see the obvious ones getting out to it. Like two strong horses. In the final race. Chariots of fire or something like that. I don't know. That's what I was thinking of. MDG. Not far behind, bounces off and finds the near side! Finds the near side and swerves, zigging and zagging, big block defensive, and that's an easy offensive move. Look at that! Near side, finds the gap, Ugh, and the MSM just went the wrong way, and then he was all defensive after that. Very well done. MDG is starting this one strong. Five points. 111. Team MSM has to be sweating a little bit at this point. It's not just smooth sailing through the rest of this one. I still think MSM has a little bit of a speed advantage, as you can see visibly, but MDG accelerates down the back stretch. This is going to be interesting. Inside line for the MDG. MSM almost loses for footing and goes vertical on his side. He loses the lead. MDG, but we have a pass. MSM finds the gap and cuts inside, and it went the inverse this time. And we've switched numbers, and this just suddenly got very, very exciting. Look at the swerve. And MDG, nothing he could do about it. Tried to go outside, just nothing there. Nothing, nothing out in the bright air. Indoors, outdoors, it was just, it was just all a, all a wash. Three, five, five, three. Race three. MDG. 
Stretching a lead, trying to length on the MSM, who's losing some acceleration, but still maintaining. They are close, down towards the finish. MSM is broken away. Here's the outside line, MSM, big lead, swerves a little bit, straightens out, and I think he's got this one. MDG, I think, had trouble getting out of that final turn, and you saw that it uh, really struggled. Really struggled to speed up there. Yeah, it was just slow. Well, you see the numbers. MDG needs a win to stay alive or to even win it. But it's hard to see them doing anything but first and second, honestly. I feel for the other two, but some cars are just too fast. MDG. Looking for a win right here, he has to work with an outside line. Maybe he can accelerate, maybe there will be a mistake on the MSM side. Mm, looking tough for the MDG. Where's that acceleration in the back part of the race? MSM holding a lead, it looks good. He's inside, he'll have to bump through the transition. He smooths out and I think that's gonna be it for MSM. He's gonna advance. MDG, uh, too little too late. He started strong, he had a good pass, but he couldn't convert any more wins, and that's going to do him in. MSM, though, what a racer. That one's going to slot perfectly next to all the, f the other six that have deserved their spots in the finals. Man, what a finals! I can imagine how it's going to go. The speed is, is in incredible for all of these seven here and the seven on Diecast Racing TV. Do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and do not forget to check out that Mario Kart mail-in tournament and enter some cars if you haven't also already those spots are opening up we will wrap this here and see you next time on races and fun Allen tournament and there is only one more spot left hey everybody i'm brendan welcome to day eight here on races and fun of course diecast racing tv also their day eight will happen today as well so check that out if you haven't already as all 128 cars will have somewhere raced but all the names that you remember, all the individual sweeps or the ones that were close to it, all those cars worthy of the spot are waiting for the last one to be filled. The four we have today, four threateners of taking that spot, Dude Man, David Curran, Manny, and Morris Boys. As we get going, and it looks like against what I would have judged, looks like the dude man in that odd shaped car is really bringing the speed down towards the back straight, smooth through the stretch, and he'll finish with five. Who else is going to challenge? Ooh, very close from the David Curran. So, don't count him out quite yet. But this is it. We've all worked up towards this moment. We're going to get that last spot, that last um, worthy racer, and well. Things are just going to get wild from there. All these cars looking pretty exotic today. Morris Boys, Manny, bright pinks, curves in places you wouldn't expect curves on a vehicle. Um, nice curves, let's say that. Uh, but still, I mean, I mean, what, that looks like a fire alarm in the back of the dude, man, if I'm honest. Or something from like, a, or like that, uh, like a clear version of that case they held like Baby Yoda in from the Mandalorian. Just what's coming to mind. Rounding that final turn, back straight, fight from Manny who can't make space. And that's five for the dude man. Manny luckily will cross quick and it looks like David Curran suffered that time last place. And this is a set of oddities. I feel like the Manny has potential though after the speed we I saw into the back straight just lost the 50-50 uh, there. I mean, really, that's what it is. I, sh I, I feel like I should have imagined that term earlier, but if you look at that space where uh, the tracks, the single lane tracks all converge, especially when two cars alone are converging together, it becomes a 50-50. Right? You're converging at the same time. You guys both match each other in speed and skill. We got it. But there, when you have to collide, anything can happen. It's like a double pendulum. Who knows where it's going to go? And uh, they call it a 50-50 a collision or whatever. Dude man, far side, big lead once again, a lot of speed, looks like he's wrapping it up, David Curran shoving his way into there, maybe third place. And that's, uh, we'll get that, and Morris boys could only do last again. And I guess the fight will now be between 
Manny and Curran. Technically, Morris boys are uh, still in there as well, but would need a first place here. Dude man, and he's working on a partial sweep. I'll say from our timeline, since I covered DRTV this week as well, I already know of those results. So this is really the last spot to be filled, and he looks like he's threatening to take it. Who else will advance with him, though, depending on who wins this? Looks like the Manny has a few more points. Maybe? No, I think it balances out, dude, man. With the lead, Manny or David Curran follows. Look at the camera. Who follows the David Curran? And I think he has it, because Manny doesn't even grab third. I don't think that's going to be a tie-break situation. I think it's going to go right to David. And dude, man, starting strong. Though I don't think David Curran is out of the running yet. Just needs to be faster at the beginning. Advancing with 10 points is David. And let's race that second group. Big cheer from the fans there. And uh, looks like we got DXP Racing, Daddy G, Big Ronnie, and Cindy Boomershine. Cindy Boomershine. Good set of names. And this model on the near side. You, anyone who watched DRTV today knows that that model has showed up twice in that uh, race as well. So very odd to see it a third time. Must be a good model at least. Looks like DXP Racing grinding towards the finish. A little bit of movement and a nudge from the Big Ronnie. Uh, Romy, Big Romy. I thought it was two ends, but it's an M. And but he just flicked off the walls there, both of them, Romy and DXP. I mean, it was not. It wasn't. It was a high impact down there. Big Romy, Big Romy. I want to say Remy or Ronnie, but it's it's, it's Romy. Then we go on the near side. Now we got DXP once again, who's not blowing it away out of the gate this time. Though we did have speed in the last one. Now he starts to stretch out a lead through the hairpin. Seems like he gains speed on the turn, which is rare for most vehicles. Oh, look at the Sydney Boomer shine breaking away. Sin Cindy, sorry. Oh, but loses that lead immediately. Rami now with the lead. A lot of lead changes in this one. Rami towards the finish line. Boomer shine on the near side looking for space and can't find it. A swerve at the end and Rami will take five. DXP going from five down to two, and it's a close one. Cindy having three. Good swerving out there. I mean, defensive driving is at a peak right here. You really see that some of these cars practice their moves and understand this uh, track. They have the... N oh, I got the names wrong. Boomershine was the one in the back there. Sorry about that. The Daddy G is the one in that repeated model. I got the... I, I give you a lot of excitement for not much. I'm very... <laughs> I feel bad about that. But, you know, even the best of us make mistakes, you know. And uh, I'm not even claiming to be the best of us. And sometimes I just overlook. It looked, it, from, the, from the tiny HUD right there. Here comes DXP for another five. Tiny HUD right there. I thought the Boomer Shine and the Daddy G actually blurred in my head together as similar as the same car. And I ran with it. So uh, forgive me a moment there. It was Romy with a nice nose block. Unfortunately for the Cindy, as excited as I got, three points, a straight three ones. I can't get too excited actually about that, unfortunately. Daddy G still stuck in there with a chance. 5 2 5 12, 3 5 3 11, and Daddy G there with 2 3 2. That 7, there is a chance, but Daddy G has to win and has to see the demise of one of these other cars. Daddy G, near side, inside line, trying to stretch out and maybe build some lead here. DXP is just a little bit fast, and he's going to close the door on the Daddy G who lost all his speed after that final hairpin. And there you go to the finish, DXP, Big Rami. And Daddy G, and then Sydney. Sin, I keep saying Sid, Sydney, but it's Cindy Boomershine, who I uh, misnomered earlier. Is actually not doing any better than one point, unfortunately. Advancing DXP and Big Rami. Here we go to the finals. Neat one. By the way, that's a little. Uh, a little. Maybe hat tip or 
Easter egg to the fact that I do do these first take for the for the genuine reaction to it all, and that's why sometimes, well, every once in a while I'll make a mistake like that and misnomer a car. But that being said, now you know. DXP, big lead into the finals. He's not, well, he's lost one there in the last round, but it looks like the dude man's individual sweep opportunities are zero now. He will not start fast. I thought he would have had speed against the DXP, and I think he will as we head towards the later races, but a good start for DXP Racing. David Curran seems overmatched here. But uh, I don't want to count him out. I mean, we've seen some crazier comebacks, but it just seems like this track is not built for big changes in, in skill, you know? Near side, the big Rami. I think there's potential there. It's just the hairpins for him. You can see how he starts to rattle in there and lose speed. Look at the speed loss here. And look, it's just it's just like nails on a chalkboard sometimes trying to watch him get, push his way around in the, the hairpin. Here on the far side, we got DXQ once again. Big lead down towards the finish. Building another five. Maybe Dude Man accelerating. Can we see him? Oh, we do. But he goes the wrong way. DXP swerved accidentally outside and got the nose of Dude Man. Is he like, look here, he goes in, out, and I don't know what happened there, and Dude Man went the wrong way. He should have just stayed away. And that's going to leave DXP with 5-5. Five, five. Dude Man has to pick it up here. Let's run Heat 3. Near side the DXP, far side the Dude Man are all next to David Curran. Right now, Rami is also struggling. He just can't around the hairpins. I feel bad, but is, uh, maybe this time it's going to work out. He's accelerating a little bit better. Dude Man seems to be out of it. Needs to pick up the speed right now. If DXP Racing wins this one, it's over. And there's not even an individual sweep to get excited about because, well, uh, he lost in the group stage. Here comes the Dude Man pushing once again. Oh, he gets spun away. And DXP will take it to the end, and your last spot will be filled. And yeah, we're going to run one more race. We always have to. But there's, uh... There's really nothing to... to get overly excited about here. I mean, we know who won. Individual sweep. Not possible. And, and, and there you go. I'll hype you up a little bit for the finals. We'll have 16 cars. 16 absolutely incredible racers. DXP being one of them. And DXP, I don't even know being the fastest of them, the fastest of them, to be honest, we saw some excellent ones. They all seem to be very similar in ability um, when compared to the other race. Here comes the dude man finally breaking through for a win, so I guess that's exciting for him. Um, uh, no partial sweep even for the DXP. But we got all eight of uh, all sixteen of them. S similarly matched, excellent racers. And one of them is going to win, and one lucky person is going to get 127 slower Hot Wheels cars than the one he submitted. How exciting. But um, that must be good for their collection. Here are your eight. End count. NDR, to name a few. MSM. Big names. Mario Kart mail-in tournament spots are available. Please go to the Facebook page if you have not already. And uh, submit if you want to. Information is there. Uh, join the Discord. Subscribe to the channel. Notification bell. All those things. Links in the description for those. Check out the description. Is starting to come to an end. Day nine is part one of the finals. First to feature here on the Races and Fun channel, and then of course over on the Diecast Racing TV channel for the other eight finalists, and then back to here for day ten and the final finals, the ultimate finals to really find that fastest car. Who will win? Any one of these 16 remaining has a chance. They've all shown that they're fast. They all have shown that they're capable. And so we're getting to see them all verse each other. Tribute Racing, if you remember from the first video, who came out and individually sweeped, is now not so fast when compared to these other three. Still in there, still racing, with a DRT, uh, DRT3K there falling behind, but not necessarily leading the pack anymore. End count, ooh, slows down through that final hairpin. NDR, pass by end count, near side, and Tribute Racing almost dives in there, and end count starting strong. NDR, who is known to be a speedster, who did also individually sweep, lost it there in the back straight, and end count is gonna give him a run for his money. Tribute Racing, and 
uh, DRT do not seem like they're that far behind. I could see possibility for them in these later races. We'll have to see how they do in each lane. It seems like the turns in each lane are a different uh, level of difficulty or style of difficulty and uh, can cause different speed changes over the course of the race. But every car gets to hit each lane at least once, so it certainly does balance out in the end. NDR on the near side. Tribute Racing catching up, and it should be close down here to the back straight in. Count breaks away, but DRT finds a lead. If they're all in the line, and NDR tries to push past nose block, and Tribute Racing is left in last place. DRT will end in first. And NDR is going to be stuck back in third in all partial sweep opportunities, let alone individual sweep, are already dashed with that uh, race, at least for this first group. And it's all a tangle. I mean, it's close here. This is, this is the best of the best. All of them dominant in their groups, and now we get to see them race against each other, and they are close. And you can feel the energy. You can feel the ferocity between them, the tension of relationship between the four cars on the track right now. They are all bristling and ready to uh, run each other out of the way if necessary. End count on the far side, turning that final turn, finding the gap, DRT catching up, but mm, not enough acceleration, and it looks like NDR will find third place again. And now we have a whole interesting spread of points, but it looks like Tribute Racing is the one that will fall short. He went on the rail there, you see in the replay. And I am just settling into this one. Wow. <laughs> this is great. 13 points for end count. He's a lock to advance to the, uh, the finals for this side of it. Remember, again, the Diecast Racing TV has their eight, all fast cars as well. DRT, eight on nine points. And NDR here with uh, four and three at seven. So either of them could still win. NDR is left way back though. Tribute Racing still holding in there, but he's too far back to really take over in second place. End count pushing for the finish line. Tribute Racing bursts out and he's got many length lead. A end count is behind DRT trying to find a gap and he does. He does find a gap and he will push enough points across to be advancing with end count. Tribute falls just short. He'll get five there, but he'll only go to nine, and so he won't have a chance. 15 and 12, and hard fought. NDR falls short after the first race, and wow, that's right. He will not be advancing. So end count going on, and DRT. Next set of four, if you remember Terrio Racing, a little bit slower than they compared to the other three, I'd gather, and that's kind of proving true here. But we have D Gravedigger, who was just masterful in his last performance, breaking away here. We have MSM and DXP, who are also very scary out there on the track. And it looks like Gravedigger commanding this lead, but not by much. Here comes MSM, who spins out of the way as DXP upsets him. And Gravedigger will start with five here. Terrio Racing does look like it's not starting well. I don't want to cast any judgment early on, but I mean, some speed's going to have to come if he's got any shot. Take a breather here. Join the Discord if you have not already. We're building that and working towards new things. Maybe a fantasy league for this next thing coming up. I'm still working on that. I think it'd be a good idea. So we'll see. Join that if you have any description. Has the links, okay? Description of the video has the links. Fireside, we got MSM breaking away even over Gravedigger. DXP working it as well, not too far behind. MSM wanting to really stand up as also a contender here and is. Gravedigger now many lengths behind. Here's that final turn and MSM has a clear shot to the finish. Turns around many times, 720. Pops Gravedigger's hood and he's crossing the line in first as DXP pushes him across. I wanted to say trunk, not hood. You see the replay here, you're gonna get a shot at that. Look at the 720 or more. Knocks in the Gravedigger, knocks his trunk up the wrong way. DXP comes in, passes by. I mean, so much is going on, how can I even comment on it all? Two fives. Heat three. Gravedigger MSM, DXP in there as well. He shoved his way in there. He shoved his way back into contention. Looks like Terry's gonna going to have to rest on this one, just, just not looking good. Here they go. Where is the finish? MSM on the near side. A few lengths. 
And he's going to keep an eye on Gravedigger here because he wants to see where he's at. And if he can stay straight down the back straight, he's got a chance. Knocks through, almost turns. Gravedigger finding a line on the outside, and he's got room to run. And that's five for him. DXP coming up in third. So he's going to be lacking here going into the final race. And Gravedigger reasserts himself as, well, king of the track in this one. Not to pull on that actual series called King of the Track. This is this is more of a temporal King of the Track, but I mean, it's it holds true. Gravedigger, dominating near side against MSM. He has got 11 points, MSM, and Gravedigger has 12. DXP Racing, though, has 7. So still an opportunity for DXP Racing to fight his way back in, if and only if he can beat out MSM, and if MSM takes a big fall here. He's done, well, many twirls there in the back, so he's running to happen. Almost loses ground there and leaves the track, but he stays on. MSM finding that gap near side here and dodges right through. He's nice and straight and fast, and he'll grab five and even up with Gravedigger, who'll come with three, and DXP will have to, unfortunately, be sent home. And I'm not going to even say as far as DXP uh, not being on par with these other two. I think he is. I think it's sometimes just some RNG out there or just... Um, you know, it, it's slight margins that keep a racer like DXP out of contention with the other two. 15, 16, advancing to the channel versus channel. That will wrap it for this finals. And those four will go to the epic channel v channel on day 10. Mail-in tournament spots are available. Do not forget to check out the Facebook and throw two Mario Kart cars in there if you haven't already. It's a good opportunity to get featured here on the channel as they race of it all at the finals of the mail-in tournament. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. These eight cars have proved themselves to be absolutely worthy of these eight spots and one of them, and we don't know which one yet, is gonna come away from today, proving himself once more to be worthy of the title. 128 vehicles came out for this tournament. 128 raced with all the might they had, with all the speed and skill they've worked on to build over the years of training they've put in. And only eight of them are here today on day 10, and only one of them will be crowned king of this tournament. Near side, Craigster, early lead with Papa, narrowing that. Far side, don't forget end count. DRT 3K, also just absolute monsters in this tournament. End count near side, tries to find a gap, loses it, finds it, wheel lock. Craigster's got second, Papa has first. And we are ready at this point. We are ready to see which of these eight is the fastest. We've seen a lot from all of them. And we are just, I'm bursting at the seams. I want to know. I want to experience this finals. I'm excited to be covering that with you guys today. Subscribe and join the Discord. All the links in the description for Discords and other channels and stuff. Check those out if you haven't already. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It's been a joy for everyone who submitted cars. And thank you to everyone who did from the least to the greatest. Especially those eight who get to be here today. One of you guys watching here as end count comes down to the finish, by the way. And a nose block there, DRTK. And he's going to get second. And things have flip-flopped a little one of those eight who you see on your screen today and those correspond to eight wonderful people over the cross uh, over and across the nation right one of those people at home is going to see the wonder of this tournament come before their eyes as they will win 127 hot wheels cars i can't imagine that 127 sent to their home for their collection one of those people is on the screen today, or one of their corresponding vehicles. Who will it be? End count, Papa. Seven points to their name. DRTK and Craigster are still in it, both with four. Near side, end count, pushing, but it's Papa with the lead. End count, ooh, spins, loses speed, and DRT will fall to third. Oh, here comes Craigster, fighting his way back in. That extra point may make a difference later on. He finds the gap, DRTK, let up on the gas too early. Good gap discovery. And now into heat four, we have some trouble. We have 12 points there, and, and we'll point out that car once again. Yeah, we have 12 points for Papa, and we have 10 points for end count. Craigster 
there with six. So it is possible for Craigster to fight his way back in here if he can manage first. And maybe Papa doesn't do so well, things could switch around. But it looks like Craigster just doesn't have the speed today. Near side, it looks like end count and Papa just absolutely dominant right now. End count finding his way in. Craigster pushing in. Wheel lock moment has a wheel on him and he will outdo end count, but it won't be enough to advance. End count will only lose one point to Craigster and that won't be enough. Craigster needed to get to first. And advancing 17 to 12, uh, 17 and 12, Papa and end count. Sorry to see Craigster go, sorry to see DRTK uh, go, but to even get here is such an achievement that you gotta give it up for yourself, even if you've made it this far. Absolutely so proud of every car who could get out here and show themselves worthy for this day 10 finals. Fireside there, MSM. Near side here, we got Yasu and we got Gravedigger. And it looks like uh, uh, yeah, expanding universe there as well. Falling behind. What's with MSM? Big speed right now. Down the back straight. And he'll have it. But look at Yasu. Nose block on expanding universe. And he holds on to the finish. Even with the nudge from Gravedigger, who somehow ended up in last. Which is, like, I, I can't even imagine seeing him there. The hold on from Yasu and expanding universe couldn't even get past him. He had a nose block into a rear block or a trunk block. This is a term I just made up. And Yasu is holding on. Far side, expanding universe. Keep an eye on him. I can't imagine he's going to let a race get away from him like that again. Gravedigger, also a fast vehicle, but he kind of jumped out of that first hairpin. Ugh. I can't imagine that's building him any speed. Yasu pushing in there as well and also speeding and catching up to MSM even through the outside hairpins. Accelerating down the fourth straight. MSM still holding the lead. What about Expanding Universe? Can he get past Yasu this time? It's a length between them. Finds a gap. No, Yasu with a nudge and Expanding Universe can't get around and we have the same finish. Gravedigger of all vehicles is last place. And I assure you, and I assure you, that the owner of the Gravedigger car thought it was going to be a little better going into today considering the performances of the other two videos. But the problem is, all these cars are just the, the best four. This is the best eight. And of those eight, I mean, you, you got the best, you might have the best one in this group of four here. So it's really hard when it gets to this level. MSM, near side. Pushing far past, already a big lead, expanding universe, trying to catch up, trying to hold on, putting everything he's got into it, even with the inside line still behind, trying to at least maybe get third this time and maybe push an advancement, expanding universe, Gravedigger, oh, good swerves right there, he's got a good defensive driving strategy, and he's got third place, expanding universe, hopefully expanding towards the, uh, the finals of today's finals, he has a chance to, Let's take a look at points. We have, I believe, a partial sweep in order from MSM with three fives. We have Expanding Universe with seven, and we have Yasu also with seven. So it's going to be between them. Gravedigger would need a big change here to be able to advance, and it's not looking good for him. MSM, again, breaking away from the pack as we head through that second hairpin. What do we got on the near side? We got Gravedigger working on Yasu, and it's nearing, but they're all close to each other. Expanding Universe kind of finds his way back in, rattles through that turn. You saw it, and he's lost a lot of speed. Yasu, big open track for him as long as he doesn't spin. Gravedigger can't make any noise and Yasu will move on with MSM, Gravedigger and Expanding Universe and saying those names and then saying they are heading home in the same sentence does not make sense in my head but that's indeed what's happening 20 and 10, MSM a partial sweep into the finals we go and we have a individual sweep uh, contender and I just realized Encount and MSM have the same model so they're going to I guess they're going to put silver tape in the back of end count there. Oh, they does stick out. Do you see that? End count there's got the silver tape on the back. So we'll do the best we can to keep an eye on that. Near side is the end count one. Papa right with him. MSM the far side. And we have Yasu in there as well. This is the final four. One of these cards is your fastest car. And one of these uh, submitters is going to receive 127 cars in a gift. MSM breaking away. Big lead. Papa trying to grind it out and almost does. But it looks like MSM will start with five. Five fives working on an individual sweep in the finals. 
And he and MSM did not have an individual sweep in the last video. I mean, or even a partial sweep. So it's it, to see it now is very confusing. But it's happening. MSM on the near side. Actually, maybe I gotta take another look. Yes, this is MSM on the near side. He's got the black. Uh, a spoiler pipes or whatever on the back. End count is the one with the silver, and he's falling behind. MSM creating a lead. Six possible wins coming right here. Papa trying to fight his way back in. End count is uh, grinding on the rail there. He will lose track. Uh, I don't know what happened. He'll lose his footing. And Papa with a nudge, but he'll fall into second. And now we're in a th we're in a threat position. This is scary right now. If MSM wins this race, that is your winning racer. You have it right there, and then it'll just be the individual sweep excitement. Papa. I keep my eyes on Papa right now. He's the only one. We head into Heat 3. This is the last set of four. Two more races to go to decide it all. Papa, look at him on the far side. This is the one to stare at. He needs to beat MSM no matter what. MSM is near side. Papa's far. They're both on outside hairpins, so you got to see both of them come through here. We also have N count in there who had the lead for the moment, but MSM, maybe just just better wheel, axle, whatever, but he's just got the speed. Papa is in last place and should be in first right now. We have a big roadblock spun around N count. MSM's falling behind and now second place, and Papa will come across with one. One point. MSM, though, only with three. And I think that's, I think that's it. 3-3-1. Three, three, Seven points, 5-5-3, five, five, 13, and I think it's, a, it's an insurmountable advantage. So as we head into Heat 4 here, no, but we have end count. We have end count with five who's got nine points. So it's possible. Nine points to the 13, and end count has a chance. MSM, far side. Keep an eye on M uh, end count. End count is in front of MSM right now. If end count wins, he'll go up to 14 points. MSM. Holding in there, end count, pushing towards the finish line. Here comes MSM, and he loses all his speed and his footing, and he's backwards, and he's still running his way towards the finish, and he'll win it by just a couple points. What a way to go out. He grinds on the rail and almost loses the whole thing. Life flashes before his eyes, but both of those cars only did him a service by nudging him forward. He straightens out and wins by the two points he grabbed. Of the three in second. We'll grab that. Number 105, MSM. Yeah. Back to the future DeLorean. He's going to get it. And we have a little note here. Hi, Brendan, Jeremiah, and the races and fun team. This car has been to the future and can confirm that it is the winner of this tournament. But for the sake of all the other races, go ahead and race it again. Very fun. We'll see if... The time travel was correct. Wow, and with that, the bold prediction. MSM manages to take this one. Thank you, Jeremiah, for that flashback. Mario Kart Malin Tournament, of course. Go to the Facebook. But I can't believe it. MSM, and he almost lost it. But at the end, held through and showed that he is the fastest of, well, the 128. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted for the mail-in tournament. Subscribe if you have not already. More to come here in 2023 on Races and Fun.